In the quiet town of Bethlehem, a child named Jesus was born to Mary, a simple maiden, and Joseph, a humble carpenter. This was no ordinary birth. Prophets had foretold his coming, heralding him as the Messiah, the beacon of hope and light for mankind. As whispers of this miraculous birth spread, King Herod, feeling his throne was at risk, ordered a brutal massacre of innocent children. Guided by divine dreams, Mary and Joseph fled with baby Jesus to Egypt. As a boy, Jesus already displayed an uncanny wisdom. At just 12, he debated scriptures with temple scholars, leaving them in awe. However, it was only at the age of 30 that he began his transformative public ministry. He chose 12 diverse disciples, from fishermen to tax collectors, to accompany him on a mission that would alter the course of history. The miracles he performed were astounding. He healed the sick, gave sight to the blind, turned water into wine, and even raised the dead, proving his divine power. His teachings, rooted in love, forgiveness, and faith, drew massive crowds. He spoke in parables, using simple stories to convey profound truths, making the divine relatable. But his rising influence was perceived as a threat by religious leaders and the Roman establishment. They conspired against him, manipulating one of his closest disciples, Judas, to betray him for a mere 30 silver coins. The events that followed were swift. Jesus faced false accusations, was handed over to Pontius Pilate, and against Pilate's own judgment, was sentenced to death by crucifixion. On the cross, after enduring hours of pain and ridicule, Jesus uttered the poignant words, Father, Father. Forgive them, showcasing his boundless love and mercy. His body was taken and laid in a tomb, sealed by a large stone. Three days later, the tomb stood empty. Jesus, resurrected, appeared to his disciples and many others over 40 days, reinstating his teachings and emphasizing the importance of faith. He then ascended to heaven, but not without leaving behind the promise of the Holy Spirit a divine guide for all believers that would later become the bedrock of Christianity. Long ago, when the world was not as kind and good as today, there lived a man named Noah. Unlike others around him, Noah was kind-hearted and lived a life of goodness in a world filled with mischief and wrongdoing. The earth was filled with people who were selfish and cruel, causing harm and sorrow. But Noah was different. He cared for others and lived righteously, standing out in a world of trouble. One day, Noah received a special message from God. Saddened by the earth's state, God decided to send a great flood to cleanse it. However, God saw Noah's goodness and wanted to save him, his family, and the creatures of the earth. God instructed Noah to build a huge boat, an ark, big enough for his family and a safe haven for animals. Despite disbelief and ridicule from others, Noah worked tirelessly, building the enormous ark. In an extraordinary event, pairs of every kind of animal began to arrive. Lions, elephants, birds, and even tiny insects. They came to the ark as if guided by a mysterious force, ready to be sheltered from the impending flood. Then, the rain started. It grew from a drizzle to a torrential downpour, covering the earth in water. Safely inside the ark, Noah, his family, and the myriad of animals floated atop the rising waters. The ark was a crowded, bustling refuge, filled with the sounds of animals. Noah and his family took on the immense task of caring for them, ensuring each creature was fed and safe during their time on the ark. After weeks, Noah sent a dove to seek dry land. On its first journey, it returned empty-beaked, but on the second trip, it brought back an olive branch, signaling that land was near and the waters were receding. Eventually, the ark came to rest on a mountaintop. As the water slowly subsided, Noah opened the ark, releasing the animals and his family back into the world, fresh and renewed for a new beginning. To promise never to flood the earth again, God created a rainbow in the sky. It was a vibrant symbol of hope, marking a new chapter for Noah, his family, and all Earth's creatures. A long, long time ago in Egypt, there was a baby named Moses. He was born at a time when things were hard for his people, the Israelites. The Pharaoh, who was king in Egypt, was afraid of their increasing numbers. So he made an evil rule. All baby boys from the Israelites had to be taken away. 
But Moses' mm. mom didn't want that to happen to her baby, so she came up with a brave plan. She put Moses in a basket and gently placed it among the reeds along the Nile River. The Pharaoh's daughter huh? found the basket while she was bathing in the river. She felt sorry for the crying baby and decided to take care of him. So Moses grew up in the Pharaoh's palace like a prince of Egypt, even though he was really an Israelite. When Moses got older, he saw how badly the Pharaoh was treating the Israelites. They were forced to work hard and were often beaten. This made Moses upset. And one day, he killed an Egyptian guard that was beating an Israelite slave. After this, he had to leave Egypt, so he ran away to a far-off land and lived there for many years. Then something amazing happened. God spoke to Moses from a burning bush that did not burn up. God told Moses to go back to Egypt and ask the Pharaoh to let the Israelites go free. Going back to mm. Egypt wasn't easy. The Pharaoh didn't want to listen to Moses. Mm -hmm. So God sent 10 plagues to convince the Pharaoh. There were frogs everywhere, bugs, and even darkness during the day. Finally, after the last and saddest plague, the Pharaoh agreed to let the Israelite Whoa. people free. Moses led the Israelites out of Egypt, but their journey wasn't over. When they got to the Red Sea, the Pharaoh changed his mind and came after them with his army. But Moses trusted God. He stretched out his hand, and something incredible happened. The sea split in two, and the Israelites walked through on dry land. After they were safe, the sea went back to normal, and the Pharaoh's army couldn't follow them anymore. Moses and the Israelites were finally free. <sighs> They traveled for a long time to reach a special mountain called Sinai. There, God gave Moses the Ten Commandments, which were important rules on how to live and be good to each other. Wow. Moses' life was full of adventures and miracles. He started as a baby in a basket and grew up to be a great leader who helped his people find freedom and showed them the way to live kindly and justly. In the very beginning, when the world was brand new, there was a beautiful garden called Eden. It was filled with the most colorful flowers, the juiciest fruits, and the chirpiest birds. In this garden, God created the first two people, Adam and Eve. Life in the garden was like a never-ending day of play and joy. Adam and Eve explored this wondrous place, talking with the animals, resting under the shade of magnificent trees, and enjoying the sweetest fruits. Among the countless trees in the garden, one stood out, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. God had given Adam and Eve only one rule. Do not eat the fruit from this tree. But curiosity is a powerful thing. One day, a sneaky snake came up to Eve. It whispered a tempting thought, eat the fruit and you'll be as wise as God. You'll know the difference between good and evil. The fruit looked so appealing, so delicious, and the promise of wisdom was too enticing. Eve reached out, took the fruit, and took a bite. She gave some to Adam, who also ate. But the moment they tasted the fruit, their eyes were opened in a way they hadn't expected. They saw things differently and realized they had disobeyed God. They felt fear and shame, emotions they had never known in the garden's bliss. When God learned what they had done, he was deeply saddened by their disobedience. The consequence was clear. They could no longer remain in Eden. Leaving the garden was hard. The gates of Eden closed behind them, and for the first time, they felt the sting of life's harshness. Outside Eden, the world was rugged and untamed. Adam and Eve had to learn everything from scratch, how to grow food, build shelter, and survive the elements. Life was no longer a series of joyful discoveries, but a struggle for survival. In this new world, they experienced the full spectrum of life, joy and sorrow, success and failure, birth and death. They became parents, raising children who would go on to have their own families, spreading across the land. Through their journey, Adam and Eve discovered their own strength and resilience. They faced each challenge with a growing wisdom, learning to adapt, to love more deeply, and to cherish life's fleeting moments. They taught their children the stories of Eden, the importance of making good choices and living with the consequences of their actions. In a time long ago, in the ancient lands of Jerusalem, lived a man named Jesus, who was known for his teachings of love, kindness, and the word of God. 
People from far and wide came to hear him speak and witness the miracles he performed. However, not everyone saw Jesus as a force of good. Some of the city's leaders and teachers felt threatened by his growing influence and the truths he spoke. They plotted to arrest him, fearing the change he brought. One of Jesus' disciples, Judas, led by confusion and fear, agreed to betray Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. On a quiet night, while Jesus was praying in the Garden of Gethsemane, Judas arrived with soldiers. He greeted Jesus with a hug, signaling to the soldiers who they were to arrest. Jesus was taken to the high priest, where he faced accusations and false witnesses. Despite his innocence, the leaders decided Jesus was a threat that must be eliminated. They took him to Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor, hoping he would order Jesus' death. Pilate questioned Jesus, but found no reason to punish him. Yet, the crowd, stirred up by the leaders, shouted for Jesus to be crucified. Pilate, feeling the pressure of the crowd and not wanting a riot, reluctantly agreed. The soldiers took Jesus and mocked him, placing a crown of thorns on his head and a purple robe around his shoulders, calling him King of the Jews in jest. They led him through the streets, burdened with a heavy wooden cross upon his back, to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. There, they nailed Jesus' hands and feet to the cross and raised it high. As he hung there in unimaginable pain, Jesus prayed for forgiveness for those who had wronged him, showing compassion even in his suffering. For hours, Jesus hung on the cross under the scorching sun, surrounded by a few loyal followers and his mother, who watched with broken hearts. Finally, Jesus called out, It is finished. And he took his last breath. The sky darkened and the earth shook as if mourning the loss of the Son of God. Jesus' body was taken down from the cross by his followers. They wrapped him in linen and laid him in a tomb that was sealed with a large stone. Guards were placed outside to ensure no one could steal his body. Three days later, something miraculous happened. Women who followed Jesus went to visit his tomb, only to find the stone rolled away and the tomb empty. An angel appeared to them saying, Do not be afraid, for I know you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, he has risen. Jesus, after his resurrection, appeared to his disciples and many others, proving that he had conquered death and offering hope of eternal life. He instructed his followers to spread his teachings to all corners of the world. Finally, Jesus ascended to heaven, promising that he would always be with them in spirit. His sacrifice and resurrection became the cornerstone of Christian faith, symbolizing the triumph of love and forgiveness over sin and death. Long ago, in the land of Israel, there was a young boy named David. He was the youngest of eight brothers and lived in the town of Bethlehem. David wasn't just any boy. He had a special job, looking after his father's sheep. He spent his days and nights in the fields, making sure no harm came to them. It wasn't an easy job, especially when danger lurked. Lions and bears often tried to snatch the sheep. But David was brave. With only his staff and sling, he fought them off, protecting his flock. When he wasn't with his sheep, David loved playing his harp. He played so beautifully that even the birds stopped to listen. One day, a wise man named Samuel visited David's house. God had told Samuel that David would be the future king of Israel. So Samuel anointed David, which means he chose David for a very important role. Meanwhile, in a valley not too far away, a huge problem was growing. The Israelites and their enemies, the Philistines, were preparing for battle. The Philistines had a giant warrior named Goliath. He was taller than any man and stronger than any bear. Every day, Goliath challenged the Israelites to send a warrior to fight him, but everyone was too afraid. One day, David went to bring food to his brothers who were with the Israelite army. When he saw Goliath, he couldn't believe that everyone was afraid of him. David said, I'll fight Goliath. God has protected me from lions and bears while I guarded my sheep. He will protect me now. The king gave David armor, but it was too heavy. So David decided to use just his sling and some stones. As Goliath moved in to attack, David took a stone, put it in his sling and swung it with all his might. The stone flew through the air and hit Goliath right in the forehead. Goliath fell to the ground and David had won. David's bravery showed that no matter how small you are, 
you can overcome big challenges with faith and courage. And that young boy, David, would go on to be one of the greatest kings of Israel. Over 2,000 years ago, in a humble home in Nazareth, a young woman named Mary was visited by an angel named Gabriel. Gabriel brought astonishing news. Mary, you will have a special baby. He will be God's son, and you will name him Jesus. But how can this be? How will this happen? The Holy Spirit will come upon you. With God, everything is possible. Mary was engaged to Joseph, a carpenter. When he learned about Mary's pregnancy, he was confused. But an angel appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife. Her child is from the Holy Spirit. Joseph Whoa. woke up from his dream, his mind full of the angel's words. With a heart full of faith, Joseph went to Mary. He promised to be by her side, ready to welcome and protect this miraculous child. Together, they prepared for the journey that lay ahead. Emperor Augustus required everyone to return to their hometown so he could count all the people. So Mary and Joseph set off on a long journey to Bethlehem, the town of David, where Joseph was from. When they reached Bethlehem, the town was bustling. Every inn was full. Mary and Joseph searched everywhere for a place to stay. Finally, one innkeeper said, I'm sorry, there's no room in the inn, but you can stay in the stable out back. That night, in a humble stable, surrounded by animals, Mary gave birth to Jesus. She wrapped him in cloths and laid him in a manger. In the fields nearby, shepherds watched their flocks. Suddenly, angels appeared, lighting up the sky, announcing, Tonight, in Bethlehem, a savior has been born. You will find him lying in a manger. Far away, wise men saw a bright star in the sky. It was a sign of something extraordinary. They followed the star, knowing it would lead them to a new king. The shepherds hurried to Bethlehem and found baby Jesus in the manger, just as the angels had said. The wise men arrived too, bringing gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. The birth of Jesus was a humble beginning for a king. His story of love, hope, and joy has been shared around the world. It reminds us that the most precious things often start in the simplest of ways. Happy New Year! Say goodbye to 2023 and hello to 2024! Thank you so much to everyone. We loved making Bible stories for you. Hope you liked our New Year's special with all our Bible nutshells from this year. Now get ready for 2024. We're making lots more cool videos. And a big welcome to our new viewers. Glad you're part of the Nutshell family. And we wish you all a fantastic 2024.